All right, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do 6.3 graphing sine and cosine functions here in Pre-Calc. Uh, my apologies for not being with you in person today. I am at home uh, with a sick dog, so uh, I will be returning tomorrow and uh, my wife will take my place taking care of our dog who's uh, battling an illness right now. But I'll give you more details on that when I come back. Anyways, graphing sine and cosine functions today. Probably did a little bit of this in advanced algebra. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and get after it. On this first page of notes here, uh, you can see that we have the two parent functions, sine of x and cosine of x. Sine of x in blue, cosine of x in red. If you're wondering where we got those points from or how we go about that, uh, I'm going to start with sine of x. So if you take your unit circle, and you really can't see mine or read it, but if you start at 0, sine of x, your y value, is also 0. And if you go to pi over 2, sine of x is 1. At pi, sine is back to 0. At 3 pi over 2, sine is negative 1. And at 2 pi, it's back to 0. So that's what makes this sinusoid or cyclical curve like so and if we started at 2 pi and went to 4 pi that'd be another trip around the circle we would hit these exact same values of 0 1 0 negative 1 back to 0. If you look at cosine at 0 degrees or at 0 radians cosine is 1. At pi over 2 radians cosine is 0 at pi, it's negative 1. 3 pi over 2, we're back at 0. And at 2 pi, cosine is back to 1. So you can see, again, we have this cyclical um, points going on and on again. So if we start with 2 pi to 4 pi, we would start here and go back down to 0, down to negative 1, back up to 0, back to 1. And so we see this um, continuous pattern here of our sine and cosine values as we go around the circle. And what you'll notice, possibly or not notice, um, they're really just transformations of each other. I could take this cosine wave, and if I slide it over pi over 2 units, it would mimic this sine wave exactly. So these are the two curves that we are going to refer back to today when we graph. I do want to spend a mo just a moment on this slide here, if you notice the scale uh, when I draw one of these, I just draw my horizontal line, vertical line. I'm going to make eight marks here. Um, so from 0 to 2 pi is eight marks. So if I put a mark here for 2 pi, then split it in half, split it in half again, I get my, my pi over 2s, and then I can go in between to basically get pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and so on. So that's how I do it. And then I put one mark top and bottom. But we can change the labels uh, as we need to. All right, so this graph is identical to the sine graph on the previous page. And if I go back, you can see that. I didn't change the, the wave at all. What I did change was the amplitude, the label here. You can see this is 2 sine of x instead of 1 sine of x. So all that means is it goes up to 2, down to negative 2. Other than that, the zero spots are the same. So the amplitude is this value, the value in front of sine or cosine, we take the absolute value of that. So the absolute value of 2 is 2, so that's my amplitude. We just got a height of 2 and a depth of 2 from our midline. If this was 5 sine x, we would went up to 5, back to 0, down to negative 5, back to 0. So you'll see what I do here. I, I use the same wave. I draw the same wave every time, and then I just change the scale accordingly. And now this time, we also have a vertical transformation. So normally this midline here is zero. So again, I'm going to go back to this graph. If it's zero, we can make this a solid line right here when the midline's zero. By changing the value here, and in this case, we change it five. We moved everything up five. Now my midline is five. So you can see I made this a dotted line. That's why I put the red dots there. Or the red slashes. So now my midline's at 5, 
my amplitude is three. So from my midline, I go up three, down three. So up three to eight, back to five, down three to two, back to five. So if you affect this value right here, that number just changes your midline. Normally it's zero. If we change this number, that's gonna shift our graph up or down accordingly. So if this was negative five, we would have had negative five here, up three to negative two, down three to negative eight. Positive five it is, so up three to eight, down three to two. Again, you can see that the period, that's, that's the number of units it takes to go through one cycle of the sine wave or one trip on the unit circle, if you will, that is gonna remain two pi for everything we do today. We're not shifting graphs left to right or changing this number. That will do when I come back. Today, we're just changing the top and bottom line with the amplitude and potentially the midline here uh, with our vertical shift. All right, sine of nine pi over two. Um, if you're asked to find value, so again, this is just our sine function from our very first slide. Nine pi over two, if I subtract uh, four pi over two, you can see that why four pi over two, because that's two pi. So nine pi over two is co-terminal with five pi over two. If I subtract four pi over two again, I get pi over two. So this value of nine pi over two is the same as the sine of pi over two. And our sine value at pi over two is one. So we can use the sine wave or our cosine waves to solve those uh, and or your unit circle if need be. But we're relating this back to uh, our sinusoid here. And again, this wave repeats over and over and over again. We don't want to have to draw it five, six, seven times. We want to be able to take the first wave and relate that to any particular value. All right, so sine of x from 3 pi to 5 pi. We know what sine of x looks like from 0 to 2 pi. So let me just go back to that real quick. Um, so here's our sine wave, back to that previous slide, from 0 to 2 pi. And what you'll see is every time we hit a pi value, we're at 0. So 0, pi, 2 pi, we'd go up, back down to 3 pi, down, back up to 4 pi. So we go up and back down for the odd values. We go down and back up for the even values. So if we're going to start at 3 pi, that would be the same location as pi. And so you can see this wave here. We go down, back to 4 pi at 0, up 1, back to 5 pi at 0. So we're always, with a sine function, we are always hitting 0 at the pi's. And again, if it's an odd value, we start, it would be down as opposed to 0, 2 pi, 4 pi. We start here and go up. So they could give me any uh, window there of 2 pi, and we should be able to start this wave just fine. If it started with an even number, we start at 0, go up. We start at an odd number, start at 0, and go down. And again, this is for sine of x. All right, so now you can see the same thing. Now we're going from 52 to 54 pi. Again, I don't want to start at 0 and go 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi. We'd be here all day drawing 26 of these waves. Because we're starting at an even number, just like 0, I can start right here, go up to 1, down to 0 for our odd number from 0 down to negative 1, back to 0. All right, this particular question says to give all sine values of theta where sine is zero. Now we know that happens at zero, but again, it happens at pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, 52 pi, 53 pi, right? That's what all these graphs show. Well, we don't want to have to write all of those. We want to have a way to do that um, that is short and concise. So the way we say that, the first one's at zero, and then we can add or subtract pi times k, where k is an integer. So we can add 1 pi, we can subtract 1 pi, add 2 pi, subtract 2 pi. It doesn't matter. Every time we hit a value of pi, sine is 0. Now, if we do that for cosine, 
slightly different cosine hits zero at pi over two, then three pi over two, five pi over two. So if we're gonna do that for cosine, it would be pi over two plus pi k. Again, where k is an integer. So for sine, every multiple of pi, zero pi, one pi, two pi, three pi is zero. For cosine, it's pi over two, and then we go three pi over two, five pi over two, seven pi over two, and so on. All right, negative five pi to negative three pi. So now we are to the left of zero. So you can see the end of my graph here, zero would be uh, to my right here. Again, if we start at an odd value of pi with sine, we're going to go down first, so down to negative 1, back to 0 at the even value of pi, 1, back to 0. And again, anytime you need to, feel free uh, to pause and go back if need be uh, to any of these slides. Okay, here they give me part of a wave and they're asking us is it sine or cosine and you can see that I already circled cosine but let me explain to you why. We know that for sine of x, sine of x hits zero at every value of pi. So if this was a sine wave we should have zero at four pi, zero at five pi, zero at six pi. We don't have that. We're at one negative 1, 1, negative 1. Well, that happens with cosine. And so because of that, um, we know that this is a cosine wave. So they gave me just part of it using what we know about sine and cosine. I know that sine, if this was a sine wave, it would have to be 0 at the values of pi. If it's 1 or negative 1 at the value of pi, that's cosine of x. Uh, your homework today is uh, worksheet 6.3. So if you are at home, uh, I did post it on Schoology for you. If you're in class, um, you'll be receiving that shortly. Um, yellow worksheet 6.3, so you can work through that. Uh, so that's the homework for tomorrow. Again, one last thing I want to leave with you. When you are graphing these, if you need to draw the graph, again, I just go horizontal line, vertical line. This would be zero right here. Make eight marks, okay? Just put a mark at the end here and then put one and a half. So that's two pi, halfway would be pi. Put the middle marks again for your pi over two and three pi over two. And then when you split it in half again, that's your pi over four. So don't overcomplicate it. Do the best you can. I'm sure you'll have questions. I will be back on Wednesday uh, to help you out and straighten up any questions or confusion we have from this section. And again, I appreciate your patience and we will see you on Wednesday. Thanks.